And one of the things that could really dent into your lifestyle, I don't want to say this, is childcare and its associated costs. According to a Credit Karma survey, two out of every three parents polled went into debt in order to pay for necessary items for their kids. Cameron, does that scare you? Yes, that does scare me. I mean, thinking about parents that just have one kid, that's enormous. But then you have two, three, I mean, multiples. I mean, what do you do if you just give birth to twins? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not planning or, you know, not, nothing that my parents are planning. I mean, but yeah, that's a that, big problem that, if that it cost, just happens. I mean, what do you do? Yeah. But our next guest is a parenting coach, author of The Possibility Mom and the mother of eight children. Yes, eight children. Welcome, Lisa Canning. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the show. You look great for a mom of eight kids. <laughs> Were you and your hubby yes. prepared for the sheer work and cost well, of raising all these you, kids? First of all, they come one at a time normally, okay, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you do have some time to gain experience and learn things. Uh, so for us, it's been a real great growing experience. And particularly for me, the pursuit of work-life balance and personal goals and dreams, that's probably the area where I had to learn the most. That's where I had to be stretched and just totally <laughs> like tested by fire um, in, in my personal experience. Well, you did a good job in saving us some time and you put it all in one book. So tell us <laughs> about Possibility Mom. So the Possibility Mom is my brand new book where I talk all about how to pursue your personal goals and dreams while being a great mom at the same time. And it all came out of my literally epic failure at balancing work and family life. You know, I had all these dreams in my heart. I wanted to pursue my interior design career. But at the same time, I was never seeing my husband. I was never seeing my kids. My health was failing. And I remember so acutely, I was in my minivan. I had just given birth to my fourth baby in five years. Wow. And I was bringing her to work like seven days out of hospital. And I remember that was the day I was like, there has got to be another way a mom can do this, where a mom can still feel like she's fulfilled, where she's pursuing her goals and dreams, but at the same time, being a great wife, being a great mom and taking care of herself. So that was really the beginning of this journey of writing this book and coming up with strategies and helping other moms to do the same. Yeah, see, I wouldn't call that a failure at all. Yeah. I really wouldn't because you, obviously you sound like a resourceful person, you try to make it work and it, it, it's so hard. It, come on, it's come hard. on. We, we can really all it's agree really on that. And, and you talked about balancing your dreams with parenting quite a lot. And I, I think the concept of a woman trying to have it all has been mm -hmm. talked about so much. Yes. Do you think men or your hubby or other you know, male friends or colleagues, mm -hmm. they get asked yeah. as much nowadays to you know, balance their dreams the versus <laughs> raising kids. So let me let me preface this first by saying that I really do believe a mom can have it all, but she cannot do it all herself. That is such an important distinction. I'm gonna say it again for the people in the back. I believe a mom can have it all: a great career, a great marriage, great relationships with her kids. But she cannot do all the things herself. I think in this modern space that we're in, she's a mom has got to learn what am I most essential, where am I needed, and what can I delegate to other people? So to me, it's a secondary question if men or women are asked this, this question of can you have it all? What everybody has to do, men, women, everybody, what everyone has to do, is figure out where are they most needed and where are they not most needed. So for example, in my own life, I have automated grocery shopping. It used to take me legitimately an hour and a half because I would bring children. It was always this big like negotiation, like don't eat that, don't take that. We're not having that. I would forget whatever it is that I needed to get in the first place. Now I automate my groceries by pulling up my car with my kids in it and somebody puts them in the back of my trunk and I've bought them online. It takes 15 minutes as opposed to an hour and a half. These are the ways that we need to get like ninja strategic about how we use our time. Time and energy are finite. Like they run out. It doesn't matter if you are Beyonce or if you are a stay-at-home mom with two kids. We all have the exact 
number of hours and we only have a certain amount of energy before we get tired. So I think it's just about being strategic and knowing where we need to show up and where we need to say, you know what, I'm going to give this to someone else to do. Yeah, I wish more people would <clears throat> know about that distinction is having it all versus doing it all. Mm -hmm. Because uh, what the way I sense it, and they, it may not be the most accurate thing, <laughs> but the way I sense it is when a guy has a child, nobody's going to ask him, oh, are you going to, what are you going to do? Like, you know, but when a woman, a professional working career lady has a kid, first kid, and they'd be like, oh, are you thinking about taking some time off? And then, you know, maybe in their supervisor's mind be like, eh, she's going to be gone a lot for the next year or two or f five. <laughs> what not, right? So I wish other people can understand this distinction too, that as a mom, you can delegate if you have a good partner and, you know, sufficient amount of resource. But yeah. like, even if you don't, I think everyone can come up with ways to delegate. Like looking at your community, the way that we used to live in the past is very different than today. Today, people go home to their literal concrete boxes and they sometimes shut the door. They don't know their neighbors. Their kids don't know people in the building. Whereas in past time periods, people lived and played and worked and did household chores together. And this is like, I, this is my new mission. <laughs> I think that's gonna be my next book, is this concept of asking for help and being okay to ask for help. Like it's not a sign of weakness. I don't know why it became the standard of success that we do it all ourselves. And so I'm on a mission to help moms understand that it's very okay to ask for help and how to ask for help. So. What about a girlfriend who also has kids? Can you guys swap? Could you do all the grocery shopping one week, literally for your friend, and then she does it all one week for you and your family? Like honestly, thinking outside the box and simply just being like creative with our time and energy and resource management. You know, it's interesting how you say, um, the, the notion has always been, you can have it, all but not at once but i really like your approach as to saying you can have it all but ask for help that that part is never really part of the conversation you no know, and this has come out of my own i used to say that exactly like if you look at old interviews on my youtube channel or like on instagram lisa canning i i would i would i have past recordings where i'm literally saying oh no you you can have it all but just not at the same time and i i'm calling baloney on that i really am because it's not about, it's about delegating the right things and involving the people that you need to in this thing of support. We do not need to parent. We do not need to be business owners. We do not need to do any of these things in isolation. We can do things as a community. And I think that's the big shift that we have to, like it's necessary to have in the modern space we're in. Speaking of parenting, uh, you're very active on social media. Yeah. Have you received any comments that have made you regret anything that you've ever shared or? have done or put yeah, out Yeah, you're there. very open, right? You you're know, very open. I think that's the thing, like particularly on Instagram, I share kind of everything. So there's, I mean, to a, to a certain extent, but like I cry, I, I will jump on on moments and I do it because I want people to understand that these moments are normal, that we all go through moments of trial and that just because you're feeling overwhelmed for a moment, it doesn't mean that you are an epic failure. Also, I think we have this perception that, you know, oh my gosh, like, look, like Lisa Canning has it made or whatever. Like we, ha we can have this perception of other people, whether it's a celebrity or anybody else that you admire on, on social media. I purposefully try to be as vulnerable as I can in the areas that I'm willing to be vulnerable. Of course, I'm not, you know, I keep yeah. certain things secret, but um, <laughs> I, 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 I do that on purpose intentionally because I just think it's so important that we understand that like everybody struggles everybody and just because you might be struggling or just because you might feel like a failure one day it doesn't mean that you should not pursue your goal and dream in your heart okay we'll leave it there and my favorite thing that you said today beyonce also has 24 hours <laughs> 24 <laughs> it's hours mom, but yes so. that, but it's true it it's is true. i've seen a couple of movies about <laughs> <Yeah>. that <laughs> great thanks for coming in thanks yeah come back me. later again